Hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial which is going to be focused on yet again learning how we can customize the Django admin by utilizing the Django Grappali theme. Now as you can see here is a sample of how it will look within your Django admin. So I'm just going to teach you how you can integrate this and I'm also going to provide you with some insight on how you can add in additional customizations in terms of various options that you can add in to your settings.py file and to manage that on your own applications. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing that you need to do as always is make sure that you have a project to which you want to apply this to. So I already have a Django project here opened up in Visual Studio Code that I want to apply this theme towards. So make sure you've got that in place. Right, so let's go ahead and get started with the quick start guide. As always, I will be sure to attach all of the relevant links in the description of the video. So do keep that in mind. Right now, the first thing that you want to do is you just want to install the Django Grappelli library within your Django project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over to my terminal and I'm going to say pip install Django Grappelli within my virtual environment. Okay, there we go. So it can take a moment to install onto your system. So all you're going to want to do is just be patient as that process is completed. Perfect. Next thing that you want to do is you want to add in Grappelli to your list of installed apps. Now, please note that this must be added before django.contrib.admin. So make sure that you do that. So you can head on over to your project, then to your settings.py file. And then here, in installed apps, you can see that we have django.contrib.admin. So all you want to do is simply add in Grappelli just above django.contrib.admin. So that app. So you can copy the following. And right here above installed apps, you can just go ahead and set Grappelli as the first app here in your list of installed apps or in, in or otherwise just above django.contrib.admin at the very least. Perfect. Next thing that we want to do is we want to set the Grappelli URL in our main urls.py file. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head on to your project directory and you can open up your main urls.py file, which will be in the same directory as your settings.py file. So I'm just going to move this here and make sure that you are importing the include function from the django.urls module. So as you can see here, um, you can go ahead and also say from django.conf.urls import include. So in my case here, I'm just saying from django.urls, um, of course, importing pass and the comma include. So I want to use that include function so that I can include all of the URLs that come with the Grappelli app. So once you've got the include function imported, you can just go ahead and add in the following line here, the Grappelli URL. And I'm going to also put this above the admin URL as well. So just make sure you also have that comma at the end there as well. Perfect, so make sure you've got that set. Next thing that we need to do, or that we need to make sure, is we need to add the request context processor. So this is needed for the dashboard and switch user feature. Now, I'm utilizing Django 5, so in the newer versions of Django, you already you will already have the django.template.contextProcessors.request uh, in place. So to check if you have it or not, what you can simply do is go to your settings.py file, and you want to scroll down until you see this templates list that you have here. So as we can see here, I have the following, which is django.template.context underscore processes dot request in my templates list. And that correlates with what is required here. So in the event you don't have it, I would recommend you just copy the following and paste it in. But first of all, check if you have it already. If you already have it like I do, there's no need to do anything. You're perfectly fine in place. All right, so that's what we have set up and ready to go. You can also go on ahead and collect your media files. However, I would only really pay much attention to this when you are um, deploying in production. So just something to pay note to. All right, now before we look into um, the customization that you can set, let's go ahead and test out the fundamentals here. So you can head on over to your um, Django project and I'd recommend that you just run your server Okay, and let's go and say forward slash admin. 
And here we can see is the admin dashboard for Grappelli. So we can see we can log in with our username and password. So what I'd recommend you do is to create a soup user to sign in. If you don't know how or you're not sure, let me show you quickly how to do so. You can stop your server and you just want to say python manage.py create super user. So I'm just going to make that a bit wider. There we go. And you want to type in that command. And then you'll be able to enter in the super user you want to create. So I'm going to say admin2, skip the email, enter in a password, re enter the same password. And I'm going to log in with that super user credentials to access the Django admin dashboard. So I'm going to say python manage.py run server. And there we go. So now what we can do is enter in those credentials here. So let's just do just that. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and log in now that we have our super user credentials in place. And here we go. Here is the dashboard for Django Grappelli. So let's take a look here at the UI and the changes. So we can see here, there is a significant change here in terms of the color scheme that we have set up here. And we can see we have our app, so the authentication authorization app with the default uh, group and user model that is associated with it. Here I have a custom uh, app here called web app and the associated model underneath it. Of course, I can also click on view site and that's going to take me to my homepage of my website. So that's quite easy. I can go to admin two here and that shows the super user currently signed in. I can change the password. So we can see here that the UI has changed slightly. It also looks a little bit more cleaner in a sense, you could say, with some more texture also showing. You can also log out. Let's head on back to home. That's gonna take us to the dashboard. Now let's test how the whole process looks when we create a user. So I'm gonna click on my user model. And I can see here, we've got a nice table here, which outlines everything nice and cleanly. So I'm going to say add user. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just a little bit zoomed in. I'm going to go ahead and set a username for my user. So let's click on that. And let's go ahead and set this as, um, let's say, uh, chest user 22 under password based authentication as you can see here we can enable it's enabled by default or you can disable it so that's a new feature here that comes out of the box and then you can of course set in your password let's do that and we can just say save and then we can go and see, we have a message here that's saying the user test user 22 was added. You may edit to continue below. And here we have the options here to perform some functions. So we can say delete, so that will delete the user. We can of course save this particular user if we added in any more details. So I'm just going to scroll down and see. Yeah, so you can see that the interface is quite different. Let's go to users. And there we can see test user 22 is here. Let's click on that. So we can see we've got the checkbox selected. And what we're going to want to essentially do is we're going to want to delete that user. So here we can simply click here on the drop down, say delete selected user. So you can see that the user interface has changed quite a bit and it has moved around. And we can say then go. And we're going to see here we have a sure message. Are you sure you want to do this? And then here we can say, yes, I'm sure. And there we go, that user was deleted. So a uh, very nice part of the UI that I like here is that everything is right down here. You can see in the um, bottom footer here for Grappelli. So this is where you're going to go ahead and utilize all the actions that you want to perform in the Django admin. All right, so we can see here, it's very nice and very clean. Now I know a lot of you is probably going to have questions on the customization. So in the docs, there is a section here, which I won't dive into detail, but I will give you an overview. So here is the customization where you can change and add some features. So a lot of these features you'll add in your settings.py file. Um, if you were to change the admin title, to limit autocomplete, to switch the user, to ensure that you have clean input types. There's also some more um, information that you can delve into such as uh, collapsibles. So this is if you're going to use the class property to define the collapsibles for your model admin or if you're working with the inline model admin and the various values that you can alter. Some more information on stacked inlines and inline sortables. So this is just going to um, 
be important if you want to change the layout and the list display, etc., of what you see and what's in line with the data. And of course, we can add in sortable mix-ins, add in excludes, and also set up various inlines and lookups depending on what we want to do. So as you can see, there's a lot that you can customize and set up into place. All right, guys. So that's it for this video tutorial on how you can customize your Django admin with Django Grappelli. Guys, so as always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.